What up, what up crew? I'm going to call you guys the what up crew. I got my old baloney cord here, SO cord, whatever they call it in your region, that I recommended the other day. It's like a. Uh, Ooh, he was in a hurry flying down the road. I don't know if you heard that. Car just flew by. Um, but this is like a. Uh, extension cord on steroids you know this is what we use on the job sites for temporary power and things like that a lot of times OSHA approved and you know all that jazz so um, this is you know a, a manufactured cord so it's not in Mr. Ugly's book there um, so we I, I wanted to look into what the temperature rating of it was and we usually need to know exactly what type of wire it is, you know, to determine if we want to look on the charts and things. But it's not per se, you know, a wire that's going to be listed on our charts. But they do put the uh, temperature right there, which is, you know, probably mandatory, I would imagine. So, you know, that gets into derating, guys. I mean, we, we went over all this stuff here yesterday. Great information. I don't know if uh, you've seen yesterday's video, but it's not one to miss for sure. And it has had quite a few views already. I was quite impressed. But this, is, this piece of paper here is gold. Go back and watch yesterday's. And we had some good comments, people were learning, and that's what this channel is all about, which is awesome. So, uh, I'm not here to put you guys through a five-year electrician apprenticeship, but I just want to make it known that there are a lot of other factors in this stuff, you know, just because we learned what we learned yesterday, our wire is always determined by its temperature rating the insulation on the wire determines how much amperage and things that we can hook to it and that's what this charts all about so our standard like I said yesterday and I think on previous videos with the asterisks they're the first first three we always use that chart there 15 amps for the 14 gauge 12 for 20 amps etc once we get below that, that's when we start getting into the bigger size wires. And we really need to stay concerned with um, derating because that's kind of where that really kind of really plays a big factor. Once we start getting up, to, up into these bigger sizes because we're dealing with a lot more power. So we definitely want to make sure it's right. Uh I mean, you have to derate with the 14, 12, and 10 gauge wire as well if it comes down to it. But these are just things that, you know, if we're doing the wiring where it's going to be extremely hot all the time, just ambient temperature plays a big factor on heat, which heat is what causes the fire. So never, ever hesitate to go up a size. If you're not sure uh, the length with DC voltage in particular I think I've said that before uh, it just will not travel as far as you start having a voltage drop so if you're running something from the front of the van to the back of the van highly consider um, you know up in a wire size if it's just you know $20 more for the entire van just because you overdid things. You upped a size on wire here and there. I mean, it's cheap insurance, guys. Very cheap insurance. We went into, into some of the derating things the other day where we had a, you know, a bunch of conductors in a raceway where a bunch of them put together. That would cause heat. So we went over that into in another video. In the, another video, excuse me. Uh, so, this one here, I think we nailed it though. We had a lot of good comments. People said they were learning and that excites me. That's what the, this channel is all about. Keeping people safe. People are going to do things differently. That's just 
the way the world goes. I'm here to show you my way of doing things and I'm not only going to just say it, I'm going to show you in the books how we're figuring these things out and why it's why I do it the way I do it, I guess. That way you're not just watching some goof on YouTube um, that's going to get you hurt. Let's get this out of the way here. Drug that stuff out to show you guys. Uh, I want to go over ladders. People put ladders on these things. And um, the door, when they put the tire on the back. Don't block yourself in, guys. If there's a fire inside, how are you going to get out? If this thing has a tire on the back of it and it's lockable, where I see people lock it where you can't even open the door. So just something something said on that. Yeah, you see some rust spots there, don't you? Yeah. This thing came out of Massachusetts, Boston. So she's seen some rust. The salt over there eats everything up, but luckily it won't rust out here in the desert. So I think we stopped it anyway. And what I'm going to do on the video eventually, probably next year, because winter's coming already. Um, this will all have the uh, bed liner on it. So the bed liner will be durable. I'm probably only going to go up about halfway because the top's in pretty good shape. And we got a little primer overspray here, somebody. The guy just had to get it through uh, inspection back there, I guess. So if it had a rust hole or something, you just had to patch it, I guess. Somebody getting cut or something was a good idea. But different states, some states don't have safety inspections and things like that. We don't have them here in Nevada, so that's a good thing. So I want to show you, you know, these high tops are up there, guys. That's an eight-foot ladder. So we're nine and a half, almost 10 feet. And the AC actually fits or uh, sits about an inch or two above that rack, the post on the rack there. But this was my decision to go with one of these. They haven't been around too long. And I got to say, they're a little flimsy. But if you just need to get up there and throw some stuff on the roof, let me put a little force so it stays on the rack there. You can, I'm trying not to move it there, but you can see there's a good inch of flex in that puppy. But this is all aluminum. It's nice, you just push these buttons and this rung will come down. You really need to be careful. You can see them stacked here. But you really need to be careful with that first step, as they say. <laughs> that first step is a doozy. <laughs> I come back down, and uh, I miss that step all the time. So, but this was, you know, a choice of mine, especially, you know, theft. You know, God forbid, people that steal suck. But, you know, somebody wanted to jump up there and steal something that you uh, had up there in a, you know, tied down on the upper rack there or something. It would really suck. And you're just giving them a ladder to kind of just help yourself jump right on up there. So that was my choice to, to go that way. That thing folds up to nothing. And it's... Uh, a way to jump up there in an emergency you know screw came loose or something happened and you just need to get up there on the side of the road and you're not giving up your security so i just want to give a quick little shot of our insulation progress you see we melted that in it's sealed all the way down i come across the top here and we've got this side all taped in and 
ready to go but I still need to proceed from here down and we ran out of the uh, sticky back tar rattle trap stuff so we're not going to get that last uh, area there but I think a lot of the rattle comes down from below but it serves as an insulation if anything it's a nice uh, reflective barrier and you know I said in another video I think that spray and foam stuff it's okay I'm not I'm not dogging it but for the cost I think you can probably get a better insulation doing it this way if not better in a lot of ways uh, you know I got the rattle trap which you know right now I can put my hand on that easily the sun's beating on it you know that's quite a bit hotter right there so that's helping as an insulation barrier then you put your foam right over top of that you're taping it in with your heavy-duty aluminum duct tape duct ing tape not to be confused with duct tape duct tape fixes everything right <laughs> so I had nine mile an hour top duct tape NASCAR <laughs> so uh, I think you can get a, a, a better result um, you know even when you're uh, dressing in the winter time you know they'll tell you a lot of times dressing layers dressing layers so that's kind of the way I see the spray foam and it's so expensive so messy and you know I have no mess just besides you know a few uh, styrofoam particles flying around here and there but you know not the end of the world so we're gonna end it right there guys we'll catch you on the flip side subscribe share like and we will see you when we see you van life biker is out